So good to see everybody here this morning. It's a fun day. School is out. Wow, I thought I'd get a way better response than that, especially with the kids in here. School is out. People are fired up. It's a, and parents, is that a, a, few, a few boos? Yeah, Barb's happy. Uh, a few boos from the parents, but it'll be okay, I promise. Well, hey, this Sunday is our graduation Sunday, as you know, and it's, uh, it's always a special time to celebrate the amazing students that we've been blessed with here at Living Hope Church. And uh, I'm going to ask our 2017 graduates to come up on stage, and they're going to share just a little bit with you. Uh, I told them each to have about three minutes prepared, and they're all like, funny guy, Sam, funny guy. No, all our graduates, come on up, guys, if you want to welcome them, and uh, that'd be awesome. So. We'll line up the front here. So we have a, a great group of amazing students. Some, uh, you guys know them in many different ways. It's so cool to see how God has used them and worked in their lives over the years. And they're going to share their names. They're going to share where they graduated from. And they're going to share what their next plans are after high school. So uh, guys, if you weren't listening, you've been in school for 13 years. You should know what you need to do by now. So go ahead. I'm Timothy Hens, and I graduated from LFCHS, and my future um, right now is just work, but eventually I'll be going to college. I'm Andrew. I graduated from Little Falls, and my future plans are to go to North Central University to major in math. I'm Jessica Eberhardt, and I've also graduated from Little Falls High School. I will be attending North Central University and majoring in American Sign Language Interpreting, and I will get a minor in Children's Ministry. My name is Mikkel Vasek. I'm graduating from Little Falls, and I'm going to North Central University to major in elementary education with a math concentration. My name is Ariel Emerson. I'm graduating from Little Falls. I will be going to University of Minnesota Duluth, and I will major in integrated elementary and special education and then minor in coaching and deaf studies. My name is Kelsey Zavlowski. I graduated from Little Falls and uh, I'm going to the University of Minnesota Duluth and I'm currently undecided. I'm Melissa, I graduated from Little Falls and I will be attending St. Scholastica for nursing. I'm Michael Kalpikoff. I graduated from Little Falls High School and I'm gonna be going to Minnesota State University Moorhead to pursue a degree in economics. You'll have to pardon me, I'm a little bit sick, but uh, my name is Tristan Wheeler. I'm uh, graduating from Little Falls. I'll be going to Ridgewater College and majoring in auto body and collision repair. Uh, eventually, I'd like to own my own shop and kind of do that stuff, build race cars. Awesome. Give him a round of applause. I'm going to ask John and Sherry, and they're going to give you guys a gift. So you guys have been walked down there, and you get your gift before I even preach, and we pray for you at the end. But uh, we're going to invite them back up with their families at the end of the service, and we're going to pray for them. But guys, let's give these guys a round of applause again. I'm excited. So you guys can go ahead and see Sherry and John. In case you're wondering what they're getting, they're getting a card, hand signed by me, so when I die, it'll be worth more money. Uh, but also blankets, um, lots of different gifts we could give graduates, and uh, something to help us remind, uh, re remember Help them remember us by, and as they're studying and they're hanging out, maybe watching a little bit of Netflix, possibly. Yep, there's Tristan. That's his pictures, too. I didn't give it to him. He gets a special pretty. Those are his pictures, Sherry. You can, you, you, yep, I gave him two gifts because his mom gave them to him. So. But uh, always a fun Sunday. Um, each year I get to preach this message. I, I try to make each message specific for each class. And this year is no different. And guys, uh, as I thought about your class, as I prayed about it, um, one book, a book you've probably read, uh, kind of kept coming back. And they haven't put, don't put it up. Don't ruin the surprise yet. Uh, one book you guys have probably read just kept coming back and back. And no, Andrew, it's not the Bible, okay? <laughs> but good second guess. But actually, it's a, actually, I fought this a little bit because I go, Man, they've heard this before. It's been used by, by graduation classes for years. But I just I kept coming back to the book by Dr. Seuss called Oh, the Places You'll Go. And that's kind of our theme this morning for your class. 
uh, and that I'm not going to read you the whole book. It'd be awesome if I sat down and turned the pages and read. Uh, the elementary education majors would enjoy that very, very much. But um, the words are not just for our graduates this morning. Today, yes, is our graduation Sunday. But there's something in this message I believe for everybody. And so whether you're in first grade, do I got any first graders in here? All right. Do I got any second graders? You can yell. You can hoop. Third or fourth? We got some little guys, right? There we go. All right. We got some great kids in our room. Or whether you're almost 100 years old, uh, there's something that I believe God has for us in this message. Class of 2017. Our church body, the kids in this room today, Uh, here's the thing I want you guys, I'm going to go back to this over and over again uh, today. It's that the places you'll go will be determined by who you know. The places you'll go will be determined by who you know. And as we unpack that in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to share about this amazing class. Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity to share about you uh, what you've done and the plans you have for each and every person in this room. God, I pray that uh, these words would not be for our glory. Uh, Lord, we're going to celebrate, we're going to congratulate all those things. But God, ultimately, we're created to bring you glory. And I pray, Lord, that that would be accomplished this morning uh, in this room with these people today. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So throughout the message, I'm going to read a couple quotes uh, from the book. And uh, kind of the first one uh, from our good Dr. Seuss says, Today you are you <clears throat> that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. And the first point I want, first challenge for class of 2017, first challenge for us today is be you. Be you. One of the hardest things to learn as a kid, uh, as a student, as an adult is to just be comfortable in your own skin and be okay with who you are. So often we're trying to be something for somebody else. We try to do these things so someone else will notice. Be you. Be who God created you to be. Ephesians 2, uh, 10 says this. It'll be on the screen behind me. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us a long ago. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's work of art. Now, I don't know a lot about art, but I know that a masterpiece tends to be historically the crowning achievement of an artist. It's the thing that that artist is forever known by, their masterpiece work. And the Bible tells us that each and every one of you is God's masterpiece. You are his greatest achievement of creation. That when he formed you, he made you, he is so proud of who each and every one of you in this room is and who you're going to become and the plans he has for you. Now, think about this. We, as humans, are the only thing that were created directly in God's image, that he breathed his life into. He created life, he created trees, birds, animals, all that kind of stuff, but he breathed his breath into us. He made us in his image. How uniquely and wonderfully made are every one of you. And we forget that so often in a world where it's get through the line, get through this, get through that, get it done, finish it up, be like everybody else, go, 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 go. And yes, we live in America, we live in an individualistic society, but yet there's still a a, a challenge of conformity so often. Be you. Jessica Eberhardt. She's been in our youth ministry for a while, and uh, she has never been afraid to be herself. She has never been afraid to be herself. She's always stood for who she is and who God made her to be. And she asks, she's always asked great questions. She's always, uh, even, I shouldn't say always, she's even occasionally will challenge a few things every once in a while, which is not a bad thing. She wants to know why. And she wants to make choices that stay true to who she is. And one of my favorite things to have watched over, uh, especially the last few years for Jessica, is how she has just invested in our younger ladies in our youth ministry and how she's invested in those young girls and and saying, just hang out with me, do life with me. And that is a testament to her character. And as you heard, she's going to major in ASL and and, and minor in children's. And I know that God has a call upon her life to go and to live out the dreams the way he created for you. And so thank you for being you, Jessica, and I appreciate that uh, for year after year. Mike Kalpikoff. Where did did, did Mike escape to? there he is, right there, sitting on the edge. If, uh, Mike is our kind of resident thespian, uh, if you didn't know that, uh, in, in, in church and in motion. If you saw the spring musical at the, at the high school, uh, Mike and their, their group, they killed it. It was awesome. 
uh, that did such a great job. And, and Mike was born for that role. And you've seen Michael share his, his talents over the years in Christmas programs, uh, in motion skits when I've done them. Uh, Michael has, has learned to continue to grow in his own skin and be comfortable in who he is. And it's fun to watch God shape and mold you, Mike into what God has for you, and that continue to walk in that path that he has created you for, to be you, to be who God made you to be. Be confident in how he shaped you, how he's creating a masterpiece of your life. Listen to his plans for your life, and you'll do greater things than you could ever imagine. Ariel. Ariel is uh, pretty new, not super new, but pretty new to our ministry, and it's been so fun to watch how God has used her and, and the joy and the encouragement that she brings to other people. Uh, Ariel has a compassion for people and for life that, that is not easily found. Um, she's, she's often encouraging me. She's often showing me grace. Uh, but I just watch how she interacts with people, and she cares. And we live in a society where compassion is becoming kind of a, a lost art. And so Ariel, never lose that part of who you are. Continue to let God guide your steps. Continue to let God shape you into who the woman he wants you to be. And I'm excited to see where God's going to take you. Uh, it's been fun to hang out and, and to see how, how God has continued to become more and more real in your life and how you've had investment over the years in your life from others as well. But be you. Be who God created you to be. Dr. Seuss said it exactly right. There is no one you were than you. There is no one you were than you. Ask God to show you, to reveal to you how he sees you. So often we filter how we view ourselves through other people or through our circumstances or through whatever. But instead of seeing ourselves the way God made us, uh, I'm going to read a passage from Psalm 139 here, starting in verse 13. But I want you, if you want to close your eyes, you can. But go back to that, that artist imagery and imagine how God is, is the great artist and how he is shaping and painting and molding your life. So Psalm 139, verse 13 through 17 says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. The artist is at work. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion and as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. Wow. I hope that fills you with awe and wonder of how uniquely, amazingly created that you are. And Jesus wants you to be you. Remember that the places you go will be determined by who you know. And I pray that every one of us would know what God says about you, and you'd believe it, and you would live it out. The next quote from the good doctor uh, is this. It says, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Now, I can imagine the last thing these graduates want to hear is no more. Study more. Learn more. Now, I know some of you are going off to college, and we got some of our college kids back, but now is the time more than ever, graduates, now is the time more than ever, followers of Jesus, to grow more, to keep on growing. Never stop growing. Never stop developing your faith. Never stop becoming the person that God wants you to be. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, in the Amplified Version, says this. It says, study and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial, who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handle, handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Study and show yourself approved. Study and show you accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. One of our prayers, if you have the, had the opportunity to grow up in our church when you've been in nursery, when you've been in kids' church, when you've been in motion student ministries, is that you would fall in love with this book that the words in this book would shape who you are. This would be the foundation of everything you base your life upon. And now more than ever, graduates, never stop growing. Never stop basing your decisions. Never stop basing your life on what the words in this book teach us and how it shows us who Jesus is. And I pray that your love for the word of God, your love for scripture would grow and never, never stop 
growing, that it would be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Never stop growing. Always be a learner. Always be someone who learns God's word alone, individually, privately, in your own time. Always be someone who learns God's word in a group with other people. Because we're created for community. Your learning is only beginning when it comes to all that God wants to do in and through you. Andrew Thompson. Better take a drink of water before I get into this one. Andrew Thompson. Now, I think Andrew has the blessed honor of technically knowing me the longest uh, of all the graduates because Andrew was born about a week before I started interning here at the church, and uh, I didn't see him a ton. Like, we didn't hang out and talk and do stuff, but uh, uh, he was kind of, kind of had to hang out with mom a lot. So, uh, and Darla, I, I do laugh. Darla's like, what year did you intern? Oh, I kind of I kinda remember that, but she just had a baby, and so I don't blame Darla for not necessarily remembering uh, that year I interned here. But Andrew uh, has grown up in a family that loves Jesus, not just because his dad's a pastor, his mom and dad are leaders here, but that has shaped who he is, and it doesn't end there. The fact that we can grow up in houses of faith, but Andrew has chosen to own his own faith to say, I want my faith to be real for me, not because it's my parents, not because it's my grandparents, not because I go to church and everybody else is doing it, but Andrew has owned his own faith year after year after year. I've watched you grow in developing the gifts God's given you. As you become more confident on stage, uh, using those singing abilities and bringing glory to God. I've watched Andrew cry out for his friends at camp and at youth ministry, uh, praying at the altars for God to work in his own life, for, for guidance, for God to work in his friend's life, and uh, I love watching Andrew love on kids. Andrew is so great with kids, uh, whether it's in nursery, uh, whether it's on mission trips, whether we're just hanging out at my house or uh, going out to eat, you're loving on my own, my own personal children. That means a lot to me as a youth pastor, and it's, uh, it's a testament to who you are. So I challenge you, Andrew, to never stop growing. Never stop pushing yourself for more. I know your heart is to know him more, and as you do that, he will open up those paths. He will direct you. So, so never stop growing. Mikkel. Mikkel has been so fun to have in our youth ministry as well. Uh, she's been, been coming over the years and then uh, started dating our good friend Ben. Uh, has been just, is like, he's knew, he knew I had to bring him into the message. So. Uh, but Mikkel, similar thing. Mikkel came here and she had faith before this. But as she continued to come and develop her own faith, and she owned it. She said, this is who I want to be. And as you heard, uh, she is a young woman who desires to give her best. And she's driven. And I love that about her. And I I, I want her and I want you to continue to never stop pushing yourself to grow in the right way. And she's taken uh, opportunities in her own faith. She's engaged with other leaders like Sherry and John and others uh, in our ministry uh, to invest in her and to help her grow. She's made friendships inside our church, outside of our church, across the state. If you look around her, uh, there's a couple students from, uh, from a couple other church or from other church. Uh, and so Mikkel has reached out and, and made those friendships, and it's been so cool to watch that. And she's heading North Central to help others as a teacher. And so you get to help others learn and grow as God is shaping you. And it's going to be cool to watch what happens. And uh, I want to read this. I wrote this down on purpose. Um, this last year, Mikkel has, has led so well in her campus. She's helped with the Bible study, and she's, she stepped up. She spoke at our baccalaureate on Wednesday night, which was awesome, uh, which was a challenge and a good stretch for her, which I loved. I'm proud of the woman that you're becoming, Mikkel, that you are. I challenge you to go deeper than you ever have. His strength will protect you. His word will guide you. His peace will comfort you. Never stop growing. Tim. There's Tim. He was the first one to grab the mic today. It was fun. Tim has continually been faithful over the years. Uh, he always answers my questions when I ask them. Uh, obviously, uh, one, of my, one of my most favorite memories with Tim has been uh, our, our mission trip to El Salvador. Uh, it was fun to watch him just hang out with those kids, uh, to do those skits, to, to hang out with the guys, to even, even throw a few cracks back at them and kind of dish back what they've been dishing out. Uh, I'll never forget that. And that was a special moment. And if you know Tim, you know that Tim is not, Tim is, when it comes to, he's the opposite of me. Okay, uh, I think I talk enough for both Tim and I together, uh, and so, and I love that about him because the times when Tim and I have sat down and had personal conversations, uh, Tim has depth to him. He's not some shallow young man. 
He, he has well thought out ideas and beliefs and worldviews. And I've enjoyed our times together, Tim, where I've been able to, to pray with you and share life with you. And I, I know that God will continue to order your steps. And there's going to come a day, Tim, I'm just going to challenge you that you're going to have to talk to that special lady because it's got to happen. And you're, you're, you'll find that lady, but here's the deal. Women love the strong, silent type, Tim. So uh, continue to do that. But be you, man, like at the same point before. Uh, I'm so excited to see where God's going to take you. Know that we're always here, and we're always going to fight for you, and we're going to be there for you, and we love you. Melissa. There she is. Sorry, like I said, this is for all of us, but I'm I'm going individual too. Melissa, Melissa often has that smile on her face, which is so great to see. And uh, she's been coming here for a while, and I've enjoyed watching her include others. Uh, if you see her like in school photos and just activities, she's including people. She's rarely alone. Uh, she's always sharing life with other people, which is a huge thing. Uh, one of the ways that she has engaged her own faith, and she's never stopped growing, happened to this not that long ago. She ran uh, a half marathon. Uh, we've been talking about sex trafficking and raising money to help people be free from sex trafficking. And uh, she just didn't sit there and go, okay, Pastor Sam, you talk about speed of light, whatever. You know. She actually took it to heart. She said, I'm going to run so that others can be free. And uh, she was a part of, they did a big run yesterday, but you're, you're part of something greater uh, where God has stretched you and you took that challenge personally and you lived it out so that others can be free. And I challenge you to never stop growing as well and I know that you're gonna do amazing things in the future. Uh, you got a lot of friends up in Duluth that'll be up in that area that'll help you too. Um, my challenge to you is to never stop growing. This goes not just for Melissa but all of our grads, but find a church to connect to when you get up there. Find a ministry to grow in. Uh, Find people that are gonna help you grow in your faith. They're gonna help challenge you to own that faith more and more every single day. And I have no doubt whatsoever that God's gonna use you greatly, and I'm proud of you. And uh, I love these kids. Philippians 3, 10 through 11 says this in the contemporary English version. It says, all I want to know is Christ and the power that raised him to life. I wanna suffer and die as he did so that somehow I may be raised to life. Never stop growing. That's for all of us. Never stop growing. What are you doing to study and show yourself approved? How are you building your own faith? How are you engaging others? Are you in a life group? If you come to Living Hope Church, we do life groups. It's a small group. If you're not in a life group, get in one. Uh, If you come to Sunday school, when we have it, summer we're off for a few months. But when Sunday school kicks up again, come in. Pastor and I have talked about this. It's amazing how much of a foundation that, that even that Sunday school hour does in our kids' faith, in our, in our own faith. Get plugged into Sunday school, grow. Do you spend time with Jesus every single day? If not, make that your goal. There's something that each and every one of us can even take out of this morning's message. What's one thing you can do this week that'll help you engage your faith so that you never stop growing? Never stop growing. The places you go will be determined by who you know. And I pray that you know Jesus more than anyone else on the face of this earth. That's my prayer for every single person in this room. Lastly, my third point. You guys are like, man, he's finally. Jeez, you guys. Here's what Dr. Seuss says. He says, so be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. It's another quote from him. And provide some great advice. It's easy to agree with me that wherever you are, that's where you'll be. That was deep right there. I need you to tweet that right now, Mark. Right now. But here, one of the biggest questions our graduates have probably gotten is, what's next? Where are you going next? What are you going to do? And like, right? And you're like, yeah. When you get married, the first year, you'll get asked, like, how do you like marriage? And people used to ask me that when I married my wife. And if you know my humor, work with me. I said, you know, I'm a pastor, so it's kind of too late to back out now. I'd lose my license, but... uh, (laughs) Like, well, how am I going to answer that question? Of course I'm going to say I love being married uh, and all that kind of good stuff. But you guys are asking all these questions of what's next? Where are you going next? What are you going to do next? And those are okay questions to be asked. And in fact, we should ask that not just of our future jobs, where we're going to go for college, but our faith, our life. Because the choices we make direct exactly where you're going. The places you'll go will be determined by who you know. Who do you listen to for the direction of your life? Who has the most say in the choices that you make. The quote I read uh, talked about how life is a great balancing act, and it's true. And choices will always be a part of your life. Uh, Graduates, you guys probably started out going like, okay, do I wanna wear shorts or pants, 
or none at all this morning. Like, not today, but like when you're younger. <laughs> not today. But like, it started out like, do I, do I want strawberry or grape jelly on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Do I want, and the choices were pretty simple, but then they got like, okay, do I join band or choir? Okay. Or then it began, began to like, what table do I sit at? You know, these choices progressively. And then it was, who do I ask to prom? And choices have progressively gotten harder. And each of those choices have shaped who these students, who these leaders are. And the choices that we make direct our paths. And the challenge, that point, that point I want you guys, that, that, that third challenge for our graduates, for us this morning, is watch your steps. Watch where you're going. Continue to let God guide your steps. Psalm 37, 23 through 24 says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Those who delight in the Lord will walk in confident steps, and he will protect them. Keep Christ first in your life in every single thing that you do. Everything. My prayer is that each one of us will watch our steps. Watch where our feet take us. Watch where our choices lead us each day. Tristan, you heard Tristan at the end. He was the last student that shared up here uh, about the next step. Uh, I love seeing students at their jobs uh, that they work because then I can just totally harass them, which is fun too. Uh, but Tristan, I often get to see at Walmart. Uh, he's working hard, and we've had some fun conversations of hanging out and just talking about life and what's happening and, and the injuries he may or may not have from uh, the different activities he's involved in. Uh, but Tristan stayed true to his team this year in wrestling, even though he was hurt, and he fought hard. And that's a testament to your character of, of your perseverance. And to hear you say, I want to own my own business someday, that's huge. For you to speak that out and say, God has plans for me. And that stuff will happen as you keep Christ first, as you let him guide your steps, as you let him lead you, and continue to be that man of character. You've always been respectful, always been easy to hang out with. And now I know Don, uh, Don and Tony might go, well, you don't see him some days. Uh, but no, he, he's a great young man. And I'm excited to see where God's going to take you as well. And continue to let him guide and, and, and lead your steps. Kelsey. Any interaction I've had with Kelsey, whether at school or at church or uh, at Coburn's every once in a while, Kelsey always has this smile on her face. Uh, she's always someone who, who brings joy to where she goes. And she encourages that in others. And similar to some of our other friends uh, that are graduating today, she loves people. She loves to hang out and share life and experience life. And... Uh, I challenge you to continue to let that joy guide you. Even when troubles and challenges in life come, let that joy guide you. Let that joy that Christ brings and that you have from others in your relationships guide who you are. And I know, uh, similarly, as you go and uh, God will give you direction, what, what major to choose, uh, all that kind of good stuff, and uh, he's going to lead and guide your steps. Continue to keep them first. Remember the, the things you've been taught over the years and the, the faith that has been modeled and have been a people around you have invested in you. Let God guide your steps. I'm excited to see too. Um, one who's not on this list, I'm going to add, uh, because I'm speaking and so I have that control. Um, she's not technically part of our ministry because she go, lives in another town. Uh, but I didn't anticipate her to be here today. But Riley Johnson's here. Uh, from, she's from Foley. And uh, Riley's been one of our kids too. Kind of... In the last few years, it's been fun to watch her connect with our... You can wave Riley so people know who you are. I'm going to embarrass you. Uh, Riley's just engaged, and, and vice versa. Our girls have, and our guys have just really had, just had a connection with that ministry, which has been fun. And it's fun to see how God has used Riley in, in the dreams he has for you and the steps he's ordering. And I know that you will continue to be led by him. And uh, we're excited to see uh, how much you're going to keep Dan in line, which is, which is important. Um, but... But let God guide your steps as well, and don't compromise. Let God guide every single choice. And so, uh, guys, I'm excited to be able to, uh, to celebrate these students this morning. The question for us today is, where are our choices taking us? Does Christ have full operational control of our life or not? And you may be sitting here today thinking, this isn't where I thought I would end up at this point so far. There may be one or two of you, maybe more in this room, that feel that way. Like, this isn't where I anticipated my life would be. It's not too late to get back on track. It's not too late to say, Jesus, I give you everything. I lay my life down at your feet. I want you to be mine. For you kids, where, where are my, where are my uh, energy kids in? Wave at me. Give me a shout. 
Louder. You guys are loud for... Thank you, Tyler. Who is... There we go. So we got some energy kids in here. Energy kids. You saw these graduates up on the stage. Kids, you saw them share about what God wants them to do, what the next steps are. Kids, my challenge for you is like many of them have done, make Christ the most important part of your life because that will lead you where you want to go. And maybe you're in first grade and you're like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Is he going to be done soon? <laughs> but I promise you, if I, I pray, first of all, that this, this message would get put somewhere back in there that you can pull later. But learn from these graduates. Learn from the others in our church who've modeled their faith. And kids, let God guide every step you take. Let God lead you. The places you'll go will be determined by who you know. It's obviously today, but ultimately in our eternity as well. As we close this morning, I'm excited for where this class is going to go. We're going to hear some really cool stories from you guys of how God is leading you and guiding you and shaping you. So please let us know when like, good stuff happens. That'd be great. I love to brag on our kids. And if some bad stuff happens too, you can call me. We won't tell everybody about that stuff. But, but we're here for you. We never stop being your church. We never stop being your family. We're here for you. And know that you're never alone. Never. The places you'll go will be determined by who you know. But number one, remembering to be you. There is only one you. Keep it that way. Remember to never stop growing. Keep pushing yourself to grow closer to Christ individually and with other people. And then lastly, remember to watch your steps. Each choice you make takes you somewhere. Make sure you're going where you want to go and where you need to go. The last quote from the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, is, are this. It's a cl- the closing kind of encouragement and challenge. And I'm going to show a slideshow in just a second. It says, You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. You are God's masterpiece, every one of you. Each and every person in this room is made in God's image. You're created for a reason. He has things he's written down in eternity about each and every person's life in this room. Let that sink in. That's not pastor talk. I didn't write that. God wrote about your life before you were ever even thought of by another person. Live that out. There's a slideshow that uh, I've been prepared just to kind of see these students over the years. So I'm going to ask them to go ahead and play that for us. I'm going to come and close this out in just a moment. It's in your name and for your glory We step up to the story We will bravely trust you fully Because you say so Because you say so Because you say so We will go We step in Because you say so It's in your name and for your glory We step out into the story We will bravely trust you fully Because you say so Because you say so Say so.
You're the God of the
to thank uh, Janelle Anderson for putting that together for us. Appreciate that. Before I invite the graduates and their families to come up, uh, I can guess one of the things they would love to see this morning is that everybody would be in right relationship with God. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I do want to give that opportunity. I said earlier today, the places you go will be determined by who you know. In a non-church setting, non-church setting uh, in, the business, in the business world, that would be taken a lot different. But in a faith, in a spiritual setting, who you know determines everything. Whose you are, who you belong to. And there's no better decision we can make this morning than to be in right relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you're here today and you've not given your life to Jesus, if you've not said, Jesus, I want you to be the most important thing. I want you to define who I am. I want you to help me to grow. I want you to help guide my steps. I want to give you that chance this morning. So with nobody looking around, I'm just going to ask you to keep your eyes closed, your heads bowed. If that's you, we're going to ask you simply to raise your hand, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. That's all I'm going to ask you to do this morning. But if that's you this morning, you want to say, Sam, I want to make Christ the most important part of my life. I want to invite Jesus to come in to be my Savior, but also my Lord. If that's you today, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and I want to pray with you. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? see that hand. Thank you. Give a little bit of time, a little bit more, just in case there's somebody else. A few hands that went up. Here's what I want to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you just to pray this prayer after me. Uh, as we say oftentimes, it's no magic formula prayer. It's a simple way to help guide us. But if you pray this from your heart, if you mean this, if you see, Christ says he forgives you. He wipes your slate clean. He makes you brand new. And you get to be a part of his family. So I'm going to ask all of us to repeat after this, but there are a few hands that went up, which is awesome which is the greatest thing to celebrate today. So repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. You loved me enough to, came to, the, to come to this earth to live a perfect life, to die on the cross for my sin, and to be raised from the dead three days later. I ask you now, to forgive me of my sin, the sin that separates me and you. I pray that you would forgive me, you'd cleanse me, and you'd help me live for you all the days of my life. I want to know you above all else. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm made brand new by your sacrifice and your gift. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Those of you who raised their hands, there's a few of you today. I'm gonna ask you to meet myself or Mike and Irene at the end of the service if we can, and we would love to give you a gift uh, and just give you, just encourage you and pray with you. And so we wanna see you take that next step in developing that faith and growing what God has for you. Uh, here's how I wanna close our service. I'm gonna invite our graduates and their families to come and begin to spread across the whole altar. So Mark, I'm gonna ask you a little bit if you can. No worries, thank you. Uh, and so we're going to spread across this way, and then we're going to have you extend a hand. My, I, I believe everybody has somebody that will get to pray with them. Andrew, come on, take it. There we go. So don't be ashamed or, or afraid. Uh, come on up. So moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, if you want to come and stand maybe behind, if you can, uh, behind your graduate. And uh, just a moment, we're going to extend hands out towards these uh, amazing students that God has blessed us with. That video... The older I get, the more that video kills me because I have a middle schooler next year already. And you're like, Sam, stop it. As the parents are having kids who graduate, and they're like, you're still somewhat young. Uh, it goes so fast, doesn't it? Those of you who maybe have kids that are out of high school and out of college and all that stuff. Man alive, we are blessed. Great group of people, huh? I'm going to ask you as a church just to extend a hand towards them and we're going to pray God's blessing over them. God, thank you for these students. God, each and every one of them represents a different story, different experiences with you, different experiences with others. But God, as we talked about this morning, every one of them is created in your image. 
God, they're created to be who you created them to be. God, I pray, Lord, that they would walk in that. They would be themselves everywhere they go, whether it be college or the workforce or some other plan, God, that you would help them be themselves, Lord, to never compromise that in their walk, in their life with you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to never stop growing. God, to continue to find, to find that church, Lord, and we as a church want to help them do that, but to find a church where they're going to the next step to, God, where they can grow, and other believers and uh, a young adults group, hopefully, Lord, God, that's going to help them, their faith, so they continue to grow and develop into who you want them to be. Lord, God, and I pray that you would guide and help them watch every step they take, Lord. God, this new season is exciting. Uh, Lord, it feels weird. They're going to walk, uh, I think it's all Little Falls graduates, God, they're going to walk the line here in a few hours, God, and then they're going to go have a party tonight and hopefully win some stuff. Uh, but Lord, beyond that, then it's like, oh, I'm really done. God, I pray that you would guide their steps. Lord, prepare them, God, for the jobs. Prepare them for the potential future spouses. God, prepare them for uh, the ministries they're going to get plugged into inside and outside of the church. God, prepare them and their parents, Lord, as well, God, for what this new season brings. There may be some parents that this is their first graduate, and they're entering a new season uh, in, in parenthood, God. Give them strength. Give them wisdom, God, and how to navigate that, because it's a new journey as well for them. God, I thank you for every parent, God, every grandparent, every person, uh, Sunday school teacher, youth leader, pastor, friend, God, who's invested in these students over the last 17, 18 years of their life, God. I pray, Lord, that that investment for your glory would not return void. Lord God, as there's already been great things that have happened, Lord, you have so much more planned. Lord, help each and every person in this room, God, who, who said they want you to be number one, God, order their steps, lead them, guide them. Lord, I pray a blessing over this day, blessing over these graduates, and thank you so much for, um, thanks so much for giving me a chance to be their youth pastor, uh, as much as I was able to in their lives, God. Sometimes I take that for granted, Lord, and let them know that I will continue to be there, our coaches, my wife. God will continue to be there in their lives as much as they want us to. Uh, and in case of some people on social media, more than I, they want me to. <laughs> Pray you bless these amazing leaders and these friends and these students in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Uh, Guys, if we can take a quick picture at the end before everybody heads out quick, that would be awesome up here. Uh, but then, if you want to congratulate, give a high five. Uh, there's grad party information on the tables. Uh, we're trying to collect. If you've not given that to us, graduates, make sure we get it so we can uh, advertise that. But, guys, all the places you'll go with God, right?